Krishna Prasad. Nama Om Vishnu Badaya Krishna Vistaya Bhutale Shimati Bhakti Vedanta Swamti Namane. Namaste Sarasati Devi Gauravani Pachalini. Niva Sesha Sunivari Pushtatada Satanine. Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nitananda Shiat Vita Karadhar Shiva Sari Gauravakta Vinda. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, 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 Hare Hare. Okay, last week we left it on a bit of a cliffhanger. Um, Maharaj was just bringing up a very important point. Um, in reference to the Pacific part we're speaking of, we're speaking yeah. about... Everyone, can you can hear me okay? My voice is a bit weak today. Doesn't let me switch it yes, off. Yes, you can. Because I can't press it down. Sorry. <clears throat> okay, I guess everyone can hear me. I can't hear any complaints that he can't hear me. So that must be. We can hear you, Muli Prabhu. Thank okay, you. Okay. So we're speaking about now the the um Sankabuka Mudi Maharaj is now taking it into a discussion on specific stages in regards to absorption and remembrance, which is in relationship to Nam. Bhajan to uh, chanting Hare Krishna. So there's these three words. We've been now uh, five stages: Shravanadas, Bharanadas, Smaranadas, which is what we're Maharaj, you're just introducing that subject now. Smaranadas. Then next will be Bhavapanadas, then Prima Sampatidas. So that will be described throughout the rest of the chapters in this book. Okay, and specifically, we left off last week speaking about um, more about smaran. So that's a rough um, context of of where we are, and it's quite an important discussion because this is what we're trying to do. We are trying to remember Krishna, and there is a specific way to do it, and there's a specific cultivation which is given to us by our acharyas in remembering and being absorbed in krishna so very relevant uh discussion <clears throat> and i think some of you have copies of of sankabu kumudi and we are on page 530 so again just to remind devotees if something is not quite clear you're quite welcome to um, ask for any clarification or questions it is quite a deep subject, so <laughs> some of it might be kind of difficult to grasp at first, so, but we can discuss together and see if we can get a better understanding of what we're reading. So we have Suniti Priya, you have your hand up there. So, yeah, this next part is, this is coming towards the end of this particular chapter. We'll probably finish this chapter today, and next will be chapter 28, Bhajan of the Holy Name. Okay, so everyone's ready. Yes, I hear everyone shouting. Yes, Hare Krishna. So then we call a Mother Suniti Priya, then after her, Anupama can read. So, Mother Suniti Priya, we're on page 530, just um, starting the second paragraph. A very important point should now be made. So we're going to hear about that important point. You can hear me, Mavasaniti Priya. You are still out there. Okay, it's all gone quiet. Can uh, can anyone hear me? Can you say Hare Krishna, someone? Yes, Hare Ball. Okay. Can... Must... Sorry, Hare Krishna. Hare Where do I start, Muli Prabhu, please? Sorry. Okay, yeah, we're trying to call on you then, but um, yes. Yeah, you know what I did? I did put mute. It's my fault. Sorry, Muli yeah. Prabhu. 530. Yes. Just beginning at the second paragraph. A very, oh, very important point. Correct. That's spot on. Sorry about that, yeah. No A very problem. important point should now be made. To succeed the Samarana, devotee needs not to make any artificial efforts of remembrance. The lotus of Samarana, Dasa, Smarandas, it's called Smaran. Smaran, Samaran Das, will be naturally unfold, unfold by attentive hearing 
of the Maha Mantra. We emphasize this point because while some devotees may make conscious effort in stage of remembers, many will prefer to simply meditate on the beautiful sound vibration of Krishna's name. Those devotees should be resolved that by uh, by this one attentive activ uh, activities, they will be transformed by the Vimana. Transported. They will be transported. transported by the Vimana of Nama Sankirtan through the airways of Samrana. Smaran. Smaran. Yes. It's just Samaran. like when we say um, um, Svavanam Kirtanam Vishnu Smaranam. 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 Yeah. Smaranam. Sorry. In his commentary of Shri Bhagavatam, Vishwanath Chakravati Thakur makes a relevant and important comment to the following verse. Person who hears Shri Bhagavat regularly and are always taking a matter very seriously will have the personality of Godhead, Shri Krishna, manifested in their heart with a short time. An Acharya writes, effort in remembering Krishna is not necessary for the devotee who hears and chants. Even without a great effort, the Lord subconsciously enters into the heart. Hearing the chanting here indicates mm -hmm. remembering further evidence of the supremacy and independence of Namasan Kir Kirtana can be seen by the power of invested in the holy name the lord says without a doubt i forgive millions of offenses of a person who chants my name with faith if the holy name nullifies offenses to another lines of devotees then it is clearly both superior to and independent of them Veritably it is the king of devotion that governs over its subject. Conversely, if a devotee makes an offense to the holy name, no act of atonement or devotional, not even Krishna's himself, can nullify the offenses. Only the holy name can forgive offenses to itself. Reader may question why they should delve into the details of Samarana, such as five stages described in Bhakti Siddhant Saraswati, right. if hearing the holy name fulfills and accomplish everything, the answer is twofold. Firstly, there are some sadhikas who want to cultivate Samarana. Secondly, to fully benefit from chanting a mantra, practitioners should know practitioners, practitioners, yeah, should know the truth underlying the mantras. It's sadhana and it's sadhya that is called mantra hatha chintana. Is that right? Chintana. Both, chintana. Both Srila Prabhupada and his Guru Maharaj emphasized that a foundation for successful sadhana starts with a well-rounded understanding of uh, Sambandhi Jnana without a grasp of Bhagavad Gita, a devotee would be a loss to chant offensively. What to speak of with true feeling? The same can be said about Ab Abdi Diha. Abhideya mm. and Priyojana. There is a science to the cultivation of Namasan Kirtan, just as there is a science to the purpose of chanting. Chanting is not a lazy man's business. Okay, perhaps we'll just pause there. Any uh, comments on there or questions or reflections? Well, the, it, it talked yeah, about yeah. five stages of smarana, but I didn't understand any of the stage. Yeah, now that will be that will come up. It's mentioned in the nectar of instruction, in text eight of the nectar of instruction. Shila Prabhupada quotes Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Thakur. So, 
Within the stages we mentioned, from Shravandas to Prema Sampatidas, there is a stage called Smarandas, and that's divided into five sub subsections. So those five, we have mentioned them before. Now, they are just growing ahead of it, just to answer your question. Um, they're the, they're the four stages of remembrance, excuse me. And the names of them, one of the names is Smaran, as a general, then Dharana, then Dhyana, then Anusmriti and Samadhi. So it's different, different achievements in, in being able to meditate, specifically for us to, to meditate upon the holy name. So one, for instance, the first one is where one is able to meditate upon the holy name for just a short amount of time, even seconds, before one is distracted. And then one is able to go deeper and to sustain a meditation upon the holy name. And then it just gets deeper to it gets to the stage of samadhi. So I hope that's a little bit clearer. It will become more clear as we go through the next couple of chapters. Thank you. Yeah. But um, any other questions? Because well, I think it's the... Yes, sorry. Nimai Mata. Uh, Nitai Mata, sorry, not Nimai Mata. Um, Nitai Mata. Uh, yes. well, I was just thinking, uh, I remember sometimes you were told, uh, read, the, read the Maha Mantra, keep the Maha Mantra and really read it. When you're chanting, yeah. it's, you're just reading it. So by reading... Uh, it will be easy for us to not to get distracted and also smarana, you know, and you can, uh, yeah, you know, because Mahamantra is personality. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's a, a Prabhu, Harunam Prabhu. Yeah. So we see. Even, way. yeah, some temples even have Harunam Prabhu on the altar. You know. Yeah. Which yeah. then you know, I'm actually on the altar as a worshipful deity. But that's a method. That's one method. If if that helps you, I mean, I've done that in the past sometimes. I'm not doing that at the moment. Mm. Where you've where you're chanting. I know Krishna and Vidhi used to do that when he used to be here. He used to chant and look at the Mahamantra in a temple. So yeah. if that helps you to concentrate, then you may do that. Whatever it takes for you to be able to be absorbed as much as you can upon the holy name. Yeah. Mm. By reading the mantra. Some recommendations you can chant by in the temple by while taking darshan of the Lord, if that helps you. Mm. Others prefer to close their eyes to to aid concentration. Mm. Others in a quiet place. Others sometimes find it easier to chant with any association of devotees. And we will go through different, uh, as we chant the holy name over the years, we will we will find ourselves at different times. And different places, different yeah. ways. We, yeah. Yeah. Um, we are acquiring different means and methods to be able to maintain as mm -hmm. much attention as we can, you know. But yeah. Yeah. Here, this is interesting because um, what Maharaj is describing, he is describing uh, the process of remembrance, smarana. But as a side point, he's mentioned here, that's what he said, it's an important point. Now, simply by meditating and keeping focused upon the holy name, as Maharaj says here, then one will be transported, he described it quite poetically, by the Vimana, which means a, a, a Vedic airplane, of Nam Sankatan through the airways of Smaran. You understand it? So someone will cultivate the, or will cultivate re remembrance but we should not run uh, before we can walk. Yeah? So the first stage is to hear, and from that stage in of itself, 
we will go we will be able to go deeper in our meditation upon the holy name so then Marj brings up the question then okay so why should we study about the different stages if it's if it's all going to come of its own accord so first he says but there will be some devotees there will be some of you some of us who who want to cultivate smaran yeah we want to understand smaran and we want to cultivate it yeah to Maj said to fully benefit from the chanting and if not if one is happy and content just to hear the mantra still one should know the underlying truths of mantra japa especially chanting Hare krishna yeah it's sadhana and it's sadhya what is the um, practice of chanting and what is the perfection of chanting did you, you did you follow that so both types of persons it's in their best interest to know something about the science of chanting the maha mantra yeah, so the Maharaj is just making that point here but interesting he says um one shouldn't make any artificial efforts at remembering and then later he says some want to cultivate smaran so it sounds a little bit contradictory but now this this cultivation is based on adhikar it's based on qualification yeah if someone's just beginning to chant Hare krishna then they definitely are not going to be ready to cultivate smaran you know they you know they they simply want to learn to hear just like there's one really nice young boy who's staying at our um contemporary vedic ashram his name is yun he's comes from korea you might have seen him and um he's i when i when i watch him chant japa you know with all due respects you know he's just a young devotee he's just come into krishna consciousness about a month ago and you see him chanting japa <laughs> his mind's everywhere <laughs> he's like every five seconds his eyes are going left going right going <laughs> like that you know but he's just beginning on the process so you know we're very kind to him we try and encourage him so so he's someone who uh, wouldn't engage in the process of of the science of cultivating smaran no you just want to try and hear at least for half a round you know try to hear the mantra you follow that yeah so this is what are called in sanskrit mantra arta chin chintana the uh, science of the mantra it's um sadhana and it's sadhya yeah what's the practice to, 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 to can i ask a question and also yes. some um, uh, something to understand it is just like if you are going to a place uh, where you don't know, but you think, okay, Satna is going to help. But still, at home, you will find uh, where are we going. So it's like yeah, both maybe. ways. Can we yeah, think? You can. That's a, that's a very good example, actually. Very good example. Like if you're going to go somewhere on a train, you can... You can either get on the train and work it out as you get to the different stations, or you can go on Google Maps and you can suss it all out before you start on your journey. So then you'll recognize the different places and different stages. Yeah, that's a very good example. Thank you for that. Muli Prabhu, um, yes, it's, just, it's just a um, remark saying that, you know, the one Maharaj writes is person who hears Shri Mad Bhagavatam regularly and always talking, uh, taking matters very serious, will have personality of Godhead, Shri Krishna manifest in their heart within a short time, which it gives yeah. us the hope that if we practice more and more very seriously, it'll help us to get back, you know, to our sadhana more very seriously. It's so nice, yes. Maharaj. Yes. That I really like that. Yeah, thank you. Yes. Yeah, that's the blessings of Shima Bhagavatam. That's the blessings we can receive from Nasta Preshu Bhadreshu. There's more than one verse that describes that phenomenon. Mm -hmm. 
that we established within the heart that's in the beginning of the first canto as well yes that's by nasta preshu bhatreshu nicham bhagavata sevaya by by regularly hearing yeah that's the um that's the prescription of the medicine that, that we've been given nicham bhagavata sevaya regularly yeah that's how often we have to take the medicine every day <laughs> that we can yes thank you anybody else on this otherwise let's 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 try and uh oh yeah coming up there's a wonderful description about uh sadhya about the perfection of chanting we have read it in one of our other readings but some time ago so i might have forgotten okay let's share the reading out a bit let's have anupama you can read from any other questions or comments otherwise we can keep rolling keep rolling on keep going Hare Krishna Hare Krishna shall I stop a bit yes go ahead okay another indispensable aspect of Nam Sankirtan that should be mentioned is praying for the mercy of the holy names chanting itself is a prayer for service and as such it is to be voiced in a prayerful and reverential way furthermore mm -hmm. In the realm of the absolute, there's no difference between Krishna and his names. Praying to the name of the Lord is as indispensable an aspect of a devotee's sadhana as prayer to Krishna. Srila Prabhupada encouraged devotees to proceed this Sankirtana with a prayer to the holy name, citing the following verse of Rupa Goswami. O life of Narada's Veena, O flood of the waves of sweet nectar, O holy name of Lord Krishna, please manifest your enchanting nectarian sweetness on my tongue. Based on the foundations of knowledge and mercy, sincere effort in Nam Sankirtana certainly is all perfections. That is the assistance of Srimad Bhagavatam. By offenseless chanting, the false ego is systematically dissolved. The sadhaka relies his Siddha Deha and he becomes eligible for spontaneous Astakalya Leela meditations. This is the import of the verse cited earlier, beginning with Yatha, Yatha, Atma, Paramatya, So, <laughs> Because perfected devotees, Siddhas like Haridas Thakur, embrace Nam Bhajana as their path. Pranali to perfection, chanting Hare Krishna is the flawless Siddha Pranali of Gaudiya Vaishnavas. We should clarify that Sankirtana of Mahamantra is not another Siddha Pranali. <clears throat> According to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, it is the only Siddha Pranali for people in general in Kali Yuga. This truth is exemplified by, by a pastime in the Chaitanya Bhagavata, in which the Lord enjoys the, enjoins the residence of Navadip to chant the Mahamantra. Indeed, the Lord speaks the words of the mantra and proclaims it as the Maha Mantra. Thereafter, he makes the following statement in which he affirms that chanting grants all perfection and nothing else is required. By doing so, everyone will attain all perfection. Always chant, there's no other prescription. Okay, he... so remember we had that little bit of a, not I can say, a little bit of a, what do you might call it? He went on a little side angle, speaking about that process of Siddha Panali, which we haven't mentioned before, where one, it, it is, it was, you could say, as Marge is highlighting here, in times of yore, then it was a specific process by which Vaishnavas would adopt. They would be given a meditation on a specific spiritual form. And they would meditate upon that. But actually what Maharaj is emphasizing here and what's given to us by Prabhupada and Bhakti Siddhanta is that actually everything becomes revealed through Nam Bhajan. Everything mm -hmm. becomes revealed through the holy name. So that's why Maharaj interesting is calling like the um, Siddha Pranali is the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. <laughs> that's your mantra for achieving perfection. And then he makes a further comment. Actually, it's not just another. It is the only way for people in this age of Kali. Yeah. Harinama, 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 Iva Kevalam. Yeah. Everything 
Yeah, and then now he's quoting interesting Shila Bakhno Takor here. Bakhno Takor, interestingly, in a reading of Harinam Chintamani, he speak and in Jaivi Dharma, he speaks about the process of the ancient practice Siddhapanali, where one gets assigned a spiritual identity. At the same time, Bakhno Takor also speaks about the Maha Mantra as giving one all the details of perfection. And that's what Bhakti Siddhanta followed. And now following that is a wonderful uh, verses by Bhakti Thakur explaining his experience in, in chanting the holy name. All right. We all clear where we're going on this, all clear where we are. So Mother Anupama, you can read through this then. Okay. Ready? Pabu, you... Yes, Pabu, please. Can I ask? Okay. Pabu, uh, yes. I think there was a sentence read. Uh, by attentive chanting, your false ego mm, uh, disappear. So Hopefully, yeah. <laughs> I'm talking to myself. So yeah. so you can you can understand your chanting is attentive or not. Uh, with your false ego can be your barometer then yeah you should generally um, one of the um, for examples one of the ways that I myself particularly kind of can get some type of gauge on the quality of my chanting is yeah. how I react or how yeah. I interact yeah. with yeah. other bodies or other people how and those do provoking. I become or do I Am I quickly becoming agitated or I quickly becoming angered or quickly becoming impatient yeah. or whatever? So then I ascertain, oh, that this must be indicative of the of my the quality of my chanting. Yeah. And especially when you are put into provoking situations, still if you can understand and just be there so that from there you can make out. Maybe I think I was just yeah. when I when I heard that yeah. sentence, that's okay. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, they are the best. They are the best positions to. Uh, they actually, they're the best things. They're the best situations to have. You can make a lot of advancement. <laughs> Good barometers. Yeah. yeah. Okay, we're ready for. This is uh, Bakno Tako's Japa period. This is what he experiences. Okay, okay. go on. You can. <laughs> Sharanagati, Thakur Bhakti Vinod discloses the details of how this, this perfection unfolds because of his beauty and the wealth of inclusive truths con uh, contained within it. We include the entire song below. What power does the name of Krishna possess? My heart constantly burns in the fire of worldly desires, like a desert scorched by the rays of the sun. Entering through the holes of my ears, to the core of my heart, the holy name showers unparalleled nectar upon my soul. The holy name speaks from within my heart, moves onto the tip of my tongue, and constantly dances on it in the form of transcendental sound. My throat becomes choked up, my body violently shivers, and my feet cannot remain still. Rivers of tears flow from my eyes. Perspiration completely soaks my body. My skin thrills with rapture. My hair stands on end and my complexion turns pain and discolored. My mind grows faint. I experience devastation and my entire body is shattered in a flood of aesthetic emotions. While causing such an aesthetic disturbance, the holy name showers liquid nectar on my heart and drowns me in the ocean of divine love, love of God. It does not allow me to understand anything, for he has made me truly mad by having stolen away my mind and faculties. Such is the behavior of he in whom I have taken shelter. I'm not capable of describing all this. The holy name of Krishna is independent and thus acts according to his own sweet will. In whatever way he becomes happy, that is also the way of my happiness. The holy name is the bud of the flower of divine love and the abode of astonishing mallows. The power of the name is such that when it further blossoms, 
it re re uh, reveals his own mysterious form and qualities. Thus, my heart is abducted and taken directly to Krishna. Blossoming fully, the flower of the holy name takes me to Raj and reveals to me his own love dalliance. The name blesses me with my eternal spiritual body, keeps me right by Krishna's side, and completely destroys everything related to my mortal frame. The name of Krishna is a transcendental touchstone, a mine, a mine of all devotional mallows. It is eternally liberated, the embodiment of pure rasa. When all impediments to the pure chanting are destroyed, then my happiness will know true awakening. Beautiful. Ah, yeah, it is truly beautiful. It's quite Up to now, Yeah, cool. Yeah. Up to now, a reference to Nam uh, Bhajna has been mainly in the context of Japa. What we uh, can do, what we can do here, Mother Onapam, you can just read to the end of the chapter. So just let everyone know. Onapam okay. will read. Oh, let's see how many readers we got out there. Yeah, you can read to the end of the chapter. So let's definitely finish this chapter today. Then we can uh, open up before we go into the next chapter for any questions or comments. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Prabhu. Go ahead. <clears throat> up to. Up to now, a reference to Nam Bhajna has been mainly in the context of Japa. However, Sankirtana has been much broader connotations than depicted by a picture of solitary chanting of the Maha Mantra in Vrindavan. Firstly, Sankirtana also includes loud public chanting of Hare Krishna. Singing songs, praising Krishna's qualities, form, pastimes, and associates, and chanting Diksha Mantras like the uh, Kama Gayatri. Secondly, Sankirtana means making the holy name available to others in ways that conform to Rupa Goswami's principle of Yukta Vairagya. This does not only mean chanting in the streets to a, com a accompaniment of Mridangas and Katalas, it also means to beat the Brihad Mridanga to print literature that describes the importance of and the truths relating to Nam Sankirtana. According to Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, that sound vibration does not vanish into thin air. And this is not all. Any medium that fulfills the mission of Lord Chaitanya to take the chanting of Krishna's name to every town and village, internet, prashadam distribution, and opening temples is also an aspect of Nam Sankirtana. The two faceted aspect of non sankirtana practice and preaching, is important to grasp because it often eludes both the reclusive bhajanandi and the careless. What was that? Goshtanandi? Yeah, Goshtanandi, yeah. Goshtanandi. We're familiar with these two. Uh, oh, well, they're quite no. self explanatory. Go on. Okay. The oversight takes place in the former because. He assumes that perfection in Nam Bhajana is attained by effort alone, and in the latter, because he assumes that perfection is attained by mercy alone. The Bhajana Nandi neglects the Lord's mission but solitary med for solitary meditation, and so is bereft of Gora's special mercy. And the careless Gosha Nandi neglects the Lord's sadhana in the name of preaching, and he is bereft, bereft of Bhakti Devi's mercy. Both are mistaken for emphasizing only one of the two aspects of the Sankirtana Yagna. However, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu did both, practiced and preached. When Advaita Acharya contemplated calling the Lord to appear, he sought. If Sri Krishna were to appear as an incarnation, he himself could preach devotion by his personal example. And of course, the Lord did appear and he taught devotees to chant the holy names and to distribute them because the two activities are transcendentally and intrinsically linked. Preaching purifies and qualifies a practitioner, making him an object of the Lord's mercy. In that way, the sadhika is blessed with indispensable ingredients for a successful sadhana. Krishna repeatedly affirms his obligation to the preacher, but the Lord emphasizes preaching not as an alternative to efforts in sadhana, but as a complementary practice. These are the two sides of the touchstone coin of Sankirtana Yagna. For example, upon concluding his extensive teachings to Uddhava, the Lord says he gives himself to the preacher 
an indication that the attainment of bhav is facilitated by preaching. But the Lord then explains the connection between preaching and sadhana in this way. He who loudly recites the supreme knowledge, which is the most lucid and purifying, becomes purified day by day, for he reveals me to others with the lamp of transcendental knowledge. Bhakti Shadanda Saraswati Thakur was explicit in emphasizing the connection between preaching and spiritual attainment. He encouraged his followers by saying that congregation chanting will not only awaken in the preachers, uh, in the preacher his spontaneous devotion, but also his swarup. Our Srila Prabhupada also taught this understanding, emphasizing to devotees the need to concentrate on being free of bad habits and to trust in the power of Nam Sankit. He encouraged his followers to benefit the ignorance in the way that they themselves had been blessed, for by doing so, they would strike the right uh, balance in service. Because even in Kali Yuga, they could show others the way to perfection by attaining it themselves, as Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur summarized in a letter. But if we want to show all these Prakta Sahijyadas, Sahijyad, who are mired in their misconceptions, lamenting like a cow stuck in mud, the real glory of Raghunuga Bhakti, we ourselves must become expert in the art of bhajana, whereby others may be benefited. Okay, thank you, Robert Anupama. So that finishes chapter 27. Okay, a um, couple of pages there. Um, did anyone take any mental notes? Or anything, any specific questions, what you heard there. It's a subject we have spoken of a little bit before, especially in uh, uh I had a forgotten name of the book. Uh, you know. Nectar of the instructions. Suda Bhakti Chintamani. Suda Bhakti Chintamani. Yeah, Suda Yes. Uh, Prabhu, I felt it's talking about our mission. Yes, but specifically, Maharaj is emphasizing. So the mission, that's could say, well, he's that's the ghosty Anandi aspect. Yeah. But he's also yeah. saying here that um, as well as 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 well as the mission, the safe work, for, for example, we are distributing books. And we're chanting the holy name. So those books contain the science of devotion, which takes some serious study and then application. So for for the for these for, 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 for devotion to manifest in its full glory, our practice has to be accompanied with knowledge, with abhideya. Yeah. And then we will reach perfection a lot quicker. You know, so basically what we're saying here is that as Prabhupada would sometimes would be, he would be quite hurt when he had heard that devotees were distributing his books, but they weren't reading his books. At one point he said, then what is the point of me writing these books? If my disciples are not reading these books. So, and this what is a like transcendental balance. We have to um, not either one or the other, but we have to be, which I think we are, most of us were engaged in service to the Sankatan mission. And it's important also to, um, to understand, okay, so we're not out on the front lines distributing books, you know, myself as well. Or we might not get much chance to go on Harry now. But you are all taking part in the Sankirtan movement. That's what Maharaj is mentioned here. By doing deity worship, by um, looking after devotees, yeah, by counselling devotees, by arranging festivals, etc., etc. This is all part of the Sankirtan movement. Maharaj mentioned, uh, mentioned different things. Book dis uh, distributing everything that we do as the international site for krishna consciousness if if you're involved in any way even if you're doing the accounts you are taking part in the sangatha mission of lord chaitanya mahaprabhu yeah so please keep that in mind <laughs> you know 
So yes, Marvin Nidai uh, Mata. Yeah, that was the mission is being spoken about. The mission, when it says mission, it's not just a mission for other people. It's a mission no. for us yeah. as well. <laughs> of course. We're also part yeah. of the mission. <laughs> You know, yes, that's what I meant, Prabhu. It's for it's all inclusive one. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah. Maharaj is also speaking of experience of um, the practical experience of our ISKCON society, or perhaps um, somebody wrote these have sacrificed their own personal cultivation of um, Krishna consciousness for the preaching. Some would, some survived. <laughs> Some did well, but 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 others didn't for for various reasons. They didn't cultivate Krishna consciousness within themselves for themselves. They were just externally engaged. You know. <clears throat> so we have to find this is uh, you could say pan uh pantratrika vidhi, you could say in Bhagavad Vidhi, finding a balance, you could use that if we want. Any other questions or comments on this as we end this chapter? A beautiful description of Bhaknur Thakur, isn't it? He's uh, chanting. Um, this, that's a perfectional stage of chanting, as you might have guessed upon hearing that. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> but like if, you're, if you know the swim, then only you can. But if you know that you are drowning, don't hold hold on to somebody. You try to come up. Yeah. Was it proper to say that you know first first save yourself? Yes. Or can save yeah. anyone else? Yeah, but to be noted as well, there is a lot of um, mercy to be had by preaching. That um, that we know, we get the blessings of Prabhupada and Lord Chaitanya. Okay, the voice is going a bit. So, should we ready for? We got fifteen minutes. Well, that's a long time. Wonderful nectar. <laughs> we can have fifteen minutes into the next chapter. Unless there's any questions or comments on what we just read or spoke about there, we can go on to chapter twenty-eight. So now this is going a bit more focused. Now, Marge has given a general description. Now he's going to be more specific about the budget of the holy names. Okay, so it's very interesting. Okay, let's. I saw Mabu Chandravali had her hand up, but she's fallen in ecstasy on the floor again. You can't see her. She's rolling about in ecstasy on the floor. So um, I can have a read. Let's see. Um, unless anyone else would like to read, please raise your hand. Otherwise, I can do a few paragraphs here. My voice holds up. Hey, chapter 28, Bhajan of the Holy Names. In this chapter, we review the underlying principle of Nam Bhajan in, in remembrance, thereby highlighting the basic sankalpas a sadhaka must undertake to perfect chanting Hare Krishna. The contents of this chapter are an introduction to the rest of part six, which elaborates in detail on the stages of remembrance and the specific determinations needed to smoothly pass through them to their perfection. At the stage of Shravana, determinations were mostly external, bringing the senses in line with the standards of Sadhana Bhakti. But now, at the all-important stage of Smarana, Sankalpas are mostly internal, focused on increasing the mind's absorption in the holy name. So first one, you could say coming to Krishna consciousness. And the other one is developing Krishna consciousness, consciousness or developing our consciousness. Yeah. To effectively make those, those determinations, a devotee must be free of most impurities and have full control over his mind and senses. A devotee who is not thus qualified will be unable to properly apply himself to Nam Bhajan, what to speak of systematic remembrance. He should therefore continue to hear and chant, as before, with the confidence that when his heart is sufficiently clean, 
his chanting will transform into real bhaja. All right. So here I presume Maharaj is probably speaking as Prabhupada would in, in a general way of following the regulative principles. All right. So, so don't it doesn't mean exactly if you eat too much prashadam at breakfast one day, that means that you don't have full control over your mind and senses. And at least you're eating prashadam. Okay. So I just want to I don't know, is anyone anyone gonna comment on that? Um of course you can go too far in a name of Bashadam, and that's something else else. If it's an habitual habit of if it's an habitual habit to always overeat in a name of Bashadam, then that's not good. And that's where one could say one is not in control of their senses. No, no. That said, the devotee at Smarandas must also be further purified of material contamination, a process of purification that is complete only with the attainment of bhava. However, the strong faith and the purity of intent symptomatic of intent symptomatic of such steady devotion enables him to practice pure sadhana and to be called a pure devotee at least in terms of his aspiration, if not in terms of his attainment. True to his word, Krishna reciprocates with his devotee in a, in a variety of ways, gradually transforming the sadhaka's vision of ecstatic devotion from an intellectual concept to a perceptible one. This takes place in the same way that the first light of dawn hearkens the arrival of the sun. Krishna explains his reciprocation with this well-known analogy. So this is a quote from, looks like 11th Canto, or this look for us. Yeah. Um, this is from Krishna Canto, chapter 14, text 26. When a diseased eye is treated with medicinal ointment, it gradually recovers its power to see. Similarly, as a conscious living entity cleanses himself of material contamination by hearing and chanting the pious narrations of, of, of my glories, he regains his ability to see me, the absolute truth in my subtle spiritual form. Unquote. As a sadhaka is purified, his mind becomes increasingly peaceful and increasingly cooperative in meeting the challenge to unlock the treasure chest of Nam Sankirtan. For the Raganuga Sadaka, the natural attachment of the mind is an added advantage. His level of greed, de de determining the efficacy of his bhaja. By contrast, in the absence of eagerness for Raj Bhakti, Divide Sadaka is fully dependent on the strength of his practices. I'll read one more paragraph, and then if there's any questions or comments, then please shout out. Thakur Bhaktivinoda offers sound advice to the devotee ascending the rungs of Smarandas. He suggests that a practitioner chant a fixed number of rounds daily and at a time and place free of any external disturbance. The morning hours after Mongolati are an ideal time, either in a temple or in a solitary place in one's own home. Chanting Japi here and there at any time of the day will lead will, will hardly lead to quality bhajan. And one more paragraph to the end of the page. Uh, additionally, the Thakur emphasizes that a devotee keep his mind free from mundane faults. This instruction might appear elementary, considering that Nam Sangatan is about focused attentiveness, yet it should be taken as a word from the wise. Sagacious sadhakas never let down their guard, no matter how satisfying their progress appears. In glorifying the activities of Maharaj Rishabdev, Sukadev Goswami says, 
over to the next page, excuse me, uh, quote, an unchaste woman is very easily carried away by paramours, and it sometimes happens that her husband is violently killed by her paramours. If the yogi gives his mind a chance and does not restrain it, his mind will give facility to enemies like lust, anger, and greed, and they will, and they will doubtlessly kill the yogi. Okay, Hare Krishna. Any questions or comments there? So, Maj is outlining some basic qualification. I think he's speaking about being steady, being uh, fixed in the process of bhakti. And, um, Yeah, something I was going to say, but I can't. I just forgot it now. Yes. All right, we can read a bit more. Yes, um, any... um, I'm sorry, did you ask me to read because I had my hand up? Yes, okay. I registered. Okay. Oh, you come back from your ecstasy, have you? Yeah, no, you picked yourself up from the floor. No, I was sorting out something at the temple. They all rang me, and I was told time I was sorting. Okay, okay. Yes. Yeah. yeah, so um, I think everyone here, I think we're all chanting a fixed number of rounds. I think a lot of devotees here are initiated or aspiring for initiation. So we, I think some of you are chanting more than 16 rounds. Um Maj speaks about the best time, as, as I'm sure we all know from, from experience. Morning time is good. Mm. To keep ourselves free from mundane thoughts. Yeah, this is the point I wanted to emphasize a little bit. So um, I think I'm sure we all experience, due to the nature, nature of our conditioning, um, we should consider ourselves like um, alcoholics do. Yeah, I've got some explaining to do now. <laughs> Anyone, you've all heard of well, alcohol? I think we get it, but we always have to be cautious. Yeah, that's you never know. Yeah, Alcoholics Anonymous, one of yes. their principles is, 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 is that they always consider themselves an alcoholic and never to be cured. So they must always be careful. Because they know at any time they can again start drinking. If they start to become, what's the word, start to become com complacent. So we should always be, no matter how many years we've been practicing Krishna consciousness, even if we are able to chant 32, 40, or whatever it is, 54, 64 rounds relatively nicely, we should still be careful of how we arrange our life and what we expose ourselves to we should never think that we are um, in a liberated position and can do and can step over the um, boundaries of basic devotional practice yeah i mean i say this i mean i won't mention names but there was recently a one of the larger controversies in iskon where one um, Maharaj con was considering himself above attraction to the opposite sex and associating closely with disastrous effects. <laughs> with disastrous effects, you know. So, yeah, so anyway, there's a note. We don't want to scare everyone, but, <laughs> but we should be careful. We should be careful. And that's why he quotes this verse here from yeah Maharaj Vishabdev. Actually this quote from Maharaj Vishabdev, it's an answer because Maharaj Vishabdev, he had all mystic powers with within his grasp. And now we know the eight mystic perfections. You can create planets basically as one of the mystic perfections pretty far out. But but he never went anywhere near them. He didn't he, he didn't go anywhere near them because he was being careful, and he didn't want to become swayed 
from his devotional resolve by by indulging in these mystic perfections. So that's why I say, yeah. Another example given there, it doesn't quote the verse, but in that part of Bhagavatam, it's just like a hunter when he captures an animal, uh, say a rabbit or, or whatever it may be, then once he's captured it, he st still has to be attentive. Because at any moment, if, if he's not attentive, then the captured animal will um, scarper, <laughs> will actually run. So the same thing, we have to keep back. That's, so to do that, we keep associating with devotees, we keep attending lectures, we keep, you know, we keep following the principles, we, we avoid association where we think we might get influenced in the wrong way. We shouldn't take a chance or we should measure that association. Yeah. Like, for instance, we when the brahmacharis, when people join a temple, and, they, and at some point they're going to go and spend some time with their family. The worst time to do that is uh, Christmas time. <laughs> That's the worst time. But for instance, if a young devotee um, is going to go and stay with his family for two months, well, I guess, I guess it depends on the family. If it's a devotee family, then no problem. But generally, from my experience in, a, in living in the ashram, it's generally not the case. So then that would be worrying whether that devotee is actually going to come back. So I'm just saying that so sometimes we have to. Plus, and also those are giving uh, counseling as well. Mother Jambavati, Mother Jambavati is with us. She counsels a lot of devotees. So this is probably she's find herself counseling like that as well. Keep good association, etc. And take care of your spiritual life. And then when 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 these things are in place, as Mars quite nicely put, then you can go deeper. That's when things are going to start to happen in your spiritual life. These things are in place, and you're this is called nishta, and you're fixed. This is when you can really cultivate nam bhajan. You know, the Maharaj is given the basic adhika, the basic qualification. We're going deeper and deeper. Hare Krishna. All right, I've rabbited on the last few minutes. Any final questions or comments on that? Those things we're speaking of? Prabhu, can I just clarify? You know, you said that verse on page 540. Did you say, oh, sorry, 10 to yes. 11, chapter what, 14 or 20? Yeah, I'll have a look now. Um, Please. Uh, the 540, the one of 540 or 541? 540, 540. You oh, said yes, yeah, let me just go back. Every chapter has an appendix, number one. That's 111426. 1426. Thank you so much. Okay, Thank that's you. Uh, Thank you. What page uh, are we on? Where yeah, did we look? That's a good question because I have to move the bookmark to that page. And I'll be yeah. moving. Let's check on it. I need to read it all. Can anyone tell us what page we were on there? I've just been moving, shuffling. Yeah, it's 540. 540. I thought no, it's 541. 541, yeah, uh, and we start from a, a devotee should yeah, try. Yeah, okay. right. so next week, the first we're going to be looking at, a devotee should try to increase the number of rounds of Harinam that he chants. Okay, so we'll have a look at that next week. All right, thank you everyone for joining us. We really appreciate you giving us an opportunity for reading this and studying this. And uh, Please join us tomorrow for, for, for Bhagavad Gita. But those of you who are those of you who are regulars, I've what I've noticed, as you know, we so there's a lot of people who have registered for Bhagavad Gita. Um, there's only about four or five of them might come from new registrants. Um, switch off the recording. Oh, yeah. Switch off the recording. Okay. We have a quick discussion. Yeah, a little.